Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. I am currently sitting in the parking lot of my local thrift store. We did some spring cleaning over the weekend. I had some bags of some things to come and donate, and I thought, well, since I'm here, I might as well go in and see what I can take advantage of. Now, the catch is that I have about 30 minutes until I have to pick my daughter up from school, and I have about $15 in cash, so I thought I would put a little challenge on myself to see if I could get in and out of the thrift store in under 30 minutes and spend less than $15, but come up with some really fun items to flip. So let's go see what I can come up with. Okay, my timer's set. I have my budget and I have my special place. I love to go first in the thrift store. Do you guys have a area or a section that you guys head to first every time? Mine is this area that I feel like is almost like a dumping ground. I don't know. It is one of the most unorganized areas at my thrift store. And there's a lot of different things here, holiday stuff, florals, sign blanks, pictures, baskets. I mean, so many different things, but I feel like it gets overlooked a lot. And I feel like I have found some of my best treasures in this area. So I always come and just do a quick look over here. Uh, maybe if I need to dig through a little bit, I do. I check to see what is kind of fun and all sorts of things. But as you can see, I mean, it's just kind of a little bit of everything. I almost think this is where they dump stuff and they sort out for what section it goes to in the thrift store in this area here. And so maybe that's why you can kind of find some fun things, but I love that area. Now I found these chargers. I thought these were so pretty, but I found stacks and stacks of them. I'm wondering if somebody maybe had like a wedding or a party or something they used them for because there was just so many of them. I think these signs are really cute. It looks like there's three of them that go together, but they're $3 each. And with my budget today, I just felt like that was a lot for just a plain sign blank. I was trying to find some unique pieces. These blocks are kind of cute though for $1.50 each. I wish there was three of them. I'd make a snowman or something out of them, keep them for winter time. But I don't have time for that today. I'll have to come back another day. <laughs> Did you guys see what I just saw? I went back and went, oh wait, this looks like it could be something kind of cool. I have no idea what this is, but I know exactly what I'm gonna do with it. And it was $2, so I definitely am gonna get that. It's always fun finding Dollar Tree pieces at the thrift store. I always like to see like how they pair, like the prices compare, but I mean, Dollar Tree is not a dollar anymore. So I guess you're getting a little bit of a discount for that sign. There's also a lot of these galvanized tins here that came from Dollar Tree or Walmart, a lot of them. They're pretty reasonably priced and they all look like they're in fairly good condition. I'm just looking for something a little more unique today than something like that. Maybe if I find one that has some really cool embellishment or something on it. All year long, they have a big Christmas section. I love looking through here. I'll store things for Christmas if I need to. This is a beautiful sign the way it is. It's just not in my budget today, but it, you wouldn't have to do a whole lot to that. Look at this really cool advent here. This is beautiful. You would just need to put like the piece to count down the days to. I thought this was really fun. Too bad it's not in my budget today. Speaking of budget, I think I've met mine. It's time to go check out and I'll show you what I got. Well, the stars definitely aligned today. I found so many things for the $15 budget. I did have to put a couple of things back. It was kind of hard to choose what to keep. Hopefully you like all of the items that I got. I am really excited to make them over for you. I do have to run and get my daughter from school. I have about 10 minutes until she's out of school. Don't worry, she's 15. She has friends who can drive. I just told her I would pick her up today, so I don't have like a little one sitting alone anywhere. But I'm really, really, really excited with what I found at the thrift store today. Definitely a busy day, but a good day. 
Okay, let's have a look at all of the pieces that I picked up. I think I got some really fun pieces. We'll start with this little floral arrangement here. I think this is beautiful. It was the most expensive item that I picked up. It came in at $3. This is a very, almost like a concrete pot that this is in. It's very heavy. Um, I'm not sure I love this pot, so I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with that, but I loved these flowers. Are these paper whites? I'm not really sure what, type of flowers these are but I loved that they had these bulbs with them so they look like they're just freshly planted now I thought the detail in this piece was beautiful you can clearly see that it's missing one of the knobs on the front there and you can tell from the hardware on the back that this is meant to hang on a wall and this was $1.50 I thought it was a great price for this and I just loved that detail and I know exactly what I'm going to do with this I found this darling little whale for a dollar and it's such a sturdy piece. It's a big piece for a dollar and I do a lot of coastal decor. I thought he would be kind of fun to take and give a little bit of a makeover to, but I just really thought this was such a fun piece and for a dollar, I mean, this is bigger than anything you're going to find at Dollar Tree. So I thought it was a great deal. I thought this would make a perfect sign blank. I typically stay away from tin signs unless there's something really neat about it. Now this was $2 for it, but and you can kind of tell from the hardware that's already pre-built into this that it was meant to hang like in a vertical way. So it'll, I don't know really which way I'm going to use this for, but I just thought that this detailing around the edge was so beautiful. I could not pass that up. It's gonna be so fun to distress that and make that pop. Now this piece, I'm not really sure what this would have been used for. It was $2, but to me, it looks like it was a coffee table top for like an American Girl doll or something. I'm not really sure, but it was a good sturdy piece and I knew immediately that I was going to turn it into a riser of some sort. I just don't know how I'm gonna finish this, but I thought it was a good sturdy piece. Now this is a fun little galvanized pail or bucket. It was $1.50 and I love picking up galvanized pieces like this. I mean, you can't find, I mean, Dollar Trees are cute, but I mean, this is just so darling for $1.50. It's got this beautiful like wood piece on the handle here and it's got this really fun like texture with the paint all around the edges. That's gonna be so cute. Now this picture frame, I loved the frame. The picture is so dated in there to me. It just reminds me of something my mom would have maybe had in our kitchen when I was like in middle school or high school or something. I don't know, it's, it's pretty dated, but the frame is a good quality wood. And when I turn it over, I feel like you can kind of tell from looking at the back with all of those little staple pieces in there that it is a nice solid frame and it's going to stand the test of time. And at $2, I feel like that was such a great deal for this great frame. So for my last piece that I picked up, I paid $2 for this bushel basket. And I've seen a lot of these like painted and redone on Pinterest. And so I grabbed it thinking, oh, this is gonna be so fun to paint and do all sorts of fun things with. I'm not 100% sure how detailed I'm gonna get in painting this or what I'm gonna do or if I'll age it, but I've never seen one with a lid like this before. So I thought that was kind of fun and it seems like it's a very sturdy piece and I feel like even the little straps on it, like they're real leather. So I'm not really sure if this is like an antique or if this is, I'm I, this piece I'm, I'm interested to kind of sit and think about what I actually want to do with this one, but I thought that it would be such a fun item to redo. Um, I'm excited for you guys to stick around and see what I end up deciding to do with this one because I'm not really sure like the lid doesn't really stay open like so it's kind of hard to use it to display things so I'm not really sure but for two dollars I thought it was worth a try. All right that was my fifteen dollars let's go make some DIYs. I really love the size of this piece that I found. I'm not sure if this was a tray or if it was almost like a display case but like base or something like that. I'm not really sure. It was just a couple of dollars, but when I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I have these feet that came from the wood pilot section at Hobby Lobby, but you can find these um, at a lot of different like lumber stores, even craft stores, Amazon. They're like big oversized wooden beads, but instead of having a hole through them, they're like sliced off on the one end. So they've got a flat surface to glue onto uh, my base here. So I'm just putting putting a little bit of wood glue on here because I want this to be really strong. I want this to last a really long time and I will use just a little dot of hot glue on each of the feet here just for that instant hold. 
but I really want this piece to kind of be a timeless piece and that cherry wood that's on it is not doing it for me. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do to make sure that I get these feet completely even is I'm just using my ruler to kind of measure out where I want these. You can eyeball it, you can use a ruler, you can even draw some pencil lines on there. I end up painting the entire surface here, so if I was to draw any lines, they would get covered with the paint. But as you can see, it's very like lacquered cherry red wood something that's on there. So I wasn't sure how the chalk paint would stick to it. So I thought I would just rough up the surface a little bit just to make sure that it wasn't going to, I think with chalk paint, I would have been okay, but I really just wanted to kind of sand this down to make sure I had a little bit of, um, something for the paint to grab onto there. So I'm just using, this is just like Adirondack white, Adir I think I said that wrong, Adirond Adirondack. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> I'm like, I can see it in my head or hear it in my head. But anyway, it's a white color by Waverly and Waverly or Folk Art. But I just paint the entire surface and front and back. And it took about three coats to cover up all of that cherry wood. Now I really wanted this to have kind of a Euro cottage feel or French country feel. And so I really wanted to drive that home with some ticking stripes on here. So I just measured a couple lengths of tape and then taped it off. So that way I'm gonna paint a big stripe down the middle. And I chose to do a mineral color. This is kind of a very light gray color, almost a little bit of tan to it. And you can see I do a couple of coats on here. And then when I peel this back, this side looks absolutely great. It looks wonderful. I love that satisfying feeling of having some nice clean stripes. But when I go to peel off this second piece of tape here, you'll notice that I have some areas that I did have some bleed through. So I'll show you a little trick that I um, have yet to try until the next couple stripes I put on this piece. Uh, and so I'll kind of show you that in a moment here, kind of how to avoid that. But as I'm peeling this back, I'm starting to notice that there are some little blemishes and things there that I'm not super happy about. You can kind of see that second stripe all along, really. It kind of had some little boo-boos there. So carefully, I'm just taking one of my bigger brushes. You can use a big brush, little brush, whatever you feel more comfortable with. And I'm just going with that original white color and I'm just kind of touching that up. Now I want a, a couple different stripes on either side of that middle stripe. So I'm just using some of the washi tape from Dollar Tree here to get that. I didn't want it as wide as my painter's tape, but I wanted it to be even and symmetrical. And so I'm going to do two lengths um, or two widths of the washi tape. And then I just kind of went in and measured and got myself, I measured with the washi tape a space there where I put my painter's tape. So that way I've got my negative space. So what I'm going to do to minimize bleed through, and I've never tried this, I've seen a lot of crafters do this, and I'm always like, I'm too quick of a crafter, I don't have time for this. <laughs> but I thought I would try it on this and it actually works pretty well. So don't you hate when that happens and you're like, no, I know better, and then you try it and you go, okay, what have I been waiting all this time for? So I, you paint the original color on. So that white color is the color that I went to paint on and I'm going to dry that thoroughly. And now I'm gonna go back in with my gray color and paint over the top of that. What that does is it just creates a nice solid barrier between the tape and the surface. And so that way it's going to stop any bleed through of any future coats you put on. And so it really does help. You can see how crisp and clear these lines are when I take these pieces of tape off. This is just such a satisfying feeling to see how beautiful and wonderful that is. So that is, it does take a little bit of extra time because you essentially are adding one extra layer of paint to your coat of paint to your time but it really is worth it because you don't have to go back in and, and touch up. So now I wanted to go in and kind of distress this a little bit. That's up to you. I love to have things look like they're old or they've been around for a minute or two. And you could even just leave it as is, but I have these really fun like French labels here. This is from Chalk Couture. I have some information in my description box for Chalk Couture. If you wanna click on that, you can always reach out to me on Instagram if you have any questions. But with the, these are like kind of like screen printing so you're just defuzzing it or not or fuzzing it it wouldn't be defuzzing because you're adding a little bit of fuzz because you don't want to peel that paint off so that's what that little pad was for i was putting it on and i do my best here i get my little ruler out to measure i get asked a lot about where i get these rulers or where i got this and i got them several years ago from home goods tj maxx and home goods uh, so i always keep looking if i ever find some i will let you guys know 
So I have this chalk paste that is also from Chalk Couture. And so this is what you will put over your, it's kind of like a stencil, but it's just a little bit different because that's kind of where the screen printing process comes in a little bit. Cause you put on that chalk paste and then you scrape it off as I'm doing here. This paste was really thick a little bit. You can kind of see I'm using a little bit of elbow grease. And then after I get that all scraped back, I'm just going to peel this back to reveal my design. Now this has an adhesive on the back. I can wash this out with some water, clean out the stencil part and place this back onto my its backing. And I can have this stencil to use for several more times. So that is one of the things I hear is, is it is a little bit of an investment to go with some of these chalk couture pieces, but if they're pieces you'll use a lot, they're, they're wonderful. But look at how pretty that design is. I think I love that. I wish it had been maybe a little bit bigger for this piece, but I really like how it looks on here. Plus it's not going to take away from a display that I may put on here as a riser. There was just a little booby right there. So I just go in with a little bit of paint and touch that up. And then instead of sanding the, um, label here i'm just going over so lightly ever so lightly with just a little bit of dry paint on there to kind of distress that because i don't want to sand it it's going to smear it but look at how beautiful this piece turns out i do feel like this is a timeless look especially if you're going for that french country vibe or that euro cottage that's starting to become so much more popular now i think this is such a beautiful piece and it's going to uh, make such a statement and last a very long time I would love to know if you guys like this piece. I love putting out coastal and beach decor in the summertime in my home. And so when I found this whale for a dollar, I thought, okay, I have to grab this. This is such a nice substantial piece and I really can make this match my home. So I'm just gonna use my heat tool to remove the stickers off the front and the back, which they were on pretty good. So it takes me just a minute to work with that. But I do love using my heat tool to get stickers and things like this off. It helps a lot. A hair dryer would also work too. So if you have one of those and you're trying to get a sticker off, definitely remember that trick and that tool. So as I wipe this down, a lot of the blue paint was coming off onto my paper towel. So I'm glad we're gonna give this a fresh coat of paint here. This blue doesn't really match the coastal stuff that I have in my home. So that's why I'm going to give him a nice new coat of paint. It takes about three coats of white chalk paint to get this completely covered up and not have that blue show through, but it turns out really, really fun. So I'm just putting a little bit of antiquing wax onto just like a little dish there. And I have a chip brush and that just means that it's like those natural bristles that are really kind of, um, the spacing on them and everything gives you a really rough texture when you paint with them. So I just place that in my chalk, my, excuse me, my antiquing wax brushed a little bit of it off and then I'm just lightly going over. I don't stop. I just go in full strokes. You can kind of see I'll dab it in there. I'll wipe a little bit of it off and then I just place it down and you go from one edge to the other. And this just kind of gives you a little bit of a wood grain texture to it. You can see that some spots are heavier, some spots are lighter. I really like how the variation is and I can kind of go back in slightly on areas where the paint maybe didn't transfer you just don't want to go over an area where you already have the paint and you can see i kind of had a little boo-boo of a paint drip there so i'm just trying to clean that up there as best as i can and so that way you won't be able to see that i do the same thing going up the edges just trying to give that same wood grain texture you, you can see how my brush kind of goes over the edge there. You just want to make sure that that top layer is dry when you do this so you're not going to smear anything. I have really liked having my pieces on a little piece of paper on my craft table so I can turn them pretty easily because there's a lot of different angles to this. So I've been starting to use the pieces that Dollar Tree items are wrapped in or Hobby Lobby items are wrapped in. I've been saving those to be able to use to paint on. Not only does it save my table, but it's so nice to be able to turn these in all sorts of different directions. So now I'm doing the same thing to the back of the whale because I don't know where this is going to be set. You may be able to see it from all different angles, especially if you're reselling, you know that you want to finish all angles of your piece. And so that way it uh, looks like it's finished. <laughs> 
to me, this almost looks like this whale was carved out of like a boat oar. Like that was kind of the vibe as I was doing this that I was really feeling. And I kind of liked that and thought, oh yeah, this was maybe like an old boat oar that somebody decided to carve this whale out of and have this piece. That was kind of the texture that weathered would look. And I really just think this turns out so cute. It's going to be so fun. A lot of times I'll put the coastal decor in like my guest bathroom uh, or I'll have it uh, lots of different areas. My kids love to get it out. So I just thought this was a great addition. And for a dollar for a piece this size, I just thought you couldn't beat that. I really loved this tin sign when I saw it and it was the right price at $2 and it had this beautiful texture all around the edge of it and so I thought I can really really work with this. So I'm just going to use my heat tool to remove all of the stickers from the back here and give a nice clean surface to work on and I'm spraying it down to get it all clean all that dust and grime wiped, wiped away here and starting with a nice uh, clean slate that we want to do. My original intent with this sign was to paint it all completely white and then use some different colors to kind of make that texture on the edges pop. However, when I got to this point and kind of started seeing how the dry brushing looked on that tin, I was like, ooh, I really wanna have that be what it looks like. So I'm just going to wipe the paint back and start completely over. Uh, as I'm wiping the paint, it's drying. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of my mister on there and that's just going to help uh, get dampen the paint. So it's easy for me to wipe off. So just a wet paper towel or a wet wipe is going to help get that paint off of there. And then to protect that tin so I don't spill over with any of the paint, I'm just putting some painter's tape to give some nice crisp clean edges. And it takes about two to three coats of chalk paint to cover that middle design there. And because I don't wanna see that at all, I wanna kind of have this be its own sign and not see any of that. Um, I mean, the sign was beautiful the way it was, but I, it's just not what I'm going for. So now I put a little antiquing wax on a paper towel here, or just a towelette or something. And I want to age this color of paint here. I want it to look like it's been around for a very long time. So I'm just kind of smearing some antiquing wax on this. You create a lot of texture when you're using the chalk paint with brush strokes or whatnot. And so this is what's fun about using chalk paint is it can go to all of that antiquing wax can go into all of the different texture that you created. So it really is fun to play around with different types of waxes to see the different types of finishes you get on different colors. So I'm just rubbing this all around here and kind of going back and forth to dip it in some more wax on here. Now I don't leave it this heavy so I'll show you how I rectify that because it does look pretty heavy at this point. So I'm spraying my mister on here and this is just going to add a little bit of water on there and I will come in and just kind of wipe it back and this is going to take away some of the top layer that hasn't fallen down into all of the texture and so that way you still get the antiqued wax look but it's not as dark it's not as heavy I'm using that same towel that I used to put the antiquing wax on. I'm using it kind of like a stamp to add a little bit of extra texture, a little bit of extra aging distressing on there. Completely optional, but I do like the way that it turns out. Now I have these stencils from Essential Stencils. There's a couple of them in this package here that say, you know, like marker or antiques. And I ultimately decide on one that says vintage just because I love this antique one, but I didn't love, um, all of the detail on it. So I just kind of thought this one that said vintage was perfect. So I'm just using my ruler to kind of make sure that I get it as centered as I can here. And then I just place a little bit of painter's tape on the sides to hold that into place. Now I'm going to use some elephant chalk paint with a stencil brush. These stencil brushes also came from Essential Stencils. So if you do happen to get some stencils from them, pick up their brushes because they are so much better than the cheap Dollar Tree brushes. And they're not super expensive either. And they last, if you take care of them, they're gonna last a very long time. But I'm just using a up and down pouncing motion as, long, as well as a swirling motion. And I let the first layer dry and I actually go back in a second time to, because I wanted that vintage to really the words to really pop or the letters to really pop on there so that's why I decided to go over it twice to give a nice thick coat to it 
It's always fun to peel back your stencil and reveal your design. I just think this turns out so beautiful. Their stencils are amazing, so I highly recommend checking them out if you like to do stenciling or rub-on transfers at all. So now I'm just going to go over the letters here with just a little bit of paint. This is just the paint that was left over in my brush from painting the sign to go over the letters to kind of make them look not so crisp and clear. It just adds a little bit of weathering to them, I would say, maybe even more than distressing. And then I'm going to just peel back all of this painter's tape to reveal the edge of my sign. To help this beautiful texture shine through on the edge of this, this is just a little bit of paint. Uh, all I've done is just dip it in a little bit of white paint, brushed most of it off, and then I'm just coming over all of the edges here you can see and just hitting all of it just hits all those high points of that texture and that detail to help that pop. And I really, really love how this turns out. This has got such a beautiful design on that edge and where it was left, the color that it was like you couldn't really even see all of that detail so i just am taking my towel and a little bit of antiquing wax this is all this is doing is it's just aging the paint that's on there a little bit and it's brushing back some to kind of help that natural brown color kind of reveal itself as well I think this turns out so beautiful. I can just imagine this in some cute little old time shop or something, uh, or just something that a little storefront might have saying that they have vintage items. This would even be really so beautiful in a little powder room or something. I love this. Where would you guys put this in your house? I just think this turns out so beautiful and I love that my vision kind of changed as I went along with it. Instead of painting the entire sign, I had that idea to showcase that edge and I think I'm so grateful that I made that choice because that edge looks so beautiful. I loved this little basket when I saw this, this little galvanized bucket here. I thought the handle on it was beautiful. And I also found this piece right here. And so I think one of them was like a dollar, dollar fifty. The other one was about three dollars for this piece with all these little bulb flowers in there. Now this piece with these little flowers in there, I did not love the vase together with these. I felt like it was a little too tall and I didn't love the color of the vase. It's a little bit more like heavy European feeling for like this style in my home so I thought it would be really fun to transfer these flowers and put them into this cute little galvanized bucket here I thought that would be really fun and bring it make it a lot less formal than it was so that's that's kind of the look that I'm going for here So now I'm going to take this pot. I'm leaving all this styrofoam in it. It's glued in there pretty good, but I'm just gonna set that aside. I'll have that for a future project to work with. And now I'm just going to focus on my little pail bucket here, whatever we wanna call it. So I'm taking some floral foam here and I'm just leaving it in the plastic. I, I learned this trick years ago. If you can leave that floral foam in that plastic, your cleanup is going to be so much easier. This stuff has the most like gritty feel. <laughs> it gets everywhere, but I do have to use an open piece here in a moment. I'll show you but I'm just rolling this around on my table to kind of smush down the edges so that way it will fit into my bucket here I just want there to be a flat surface all the way across because where I have the bottom of these flowers is a bulb I wanted them to be able to be seen and not like be down into the bucket at all so you can see here, I just had to take a little bit of the floral foam that was open and then I just had to cut it uh, to size to kind of slip in that negative space there. I really did love that these flowers, and I don't even know what kind of flowers these are. Even looking at them right now, I can't. You guys, if you know what kind of flowers these are, let me know down in the comments because I... I can't tell. <laughs> they don't look like buttercups. They don't, I'm not really sure, but they're beautiful, whatever they are. But they, I just love that bulb look to them. And as you can see kind of at the top of my screen there, there was also like some faux like roots that came that I can kind of have draping out of this, which were so cute. I just loved the natural feel of all of this. So I have a very specific like way I'm putting these in. I have like a specific front and back and I'm trying to put like the largest kind of in the middle and taper them down so that 
that way it looks very uniform. You guys have heard me before in here. I'm not a florist. I've had no special training. I just do what looks good and feels good to me and where it's going in my home. Uh, yours may look completely different than how I do mine. But I will tell you that I spend so much time right here doing this and I have to undo it in just a moment. <laughs> so what I do for to cover up that floral foam is I have a bunch of moss that I purchased at um, just the craft store. And this is where I'm realizing that my bucket handle was on different. So I have to take everything out, flip the bucket handle over because like I said, there was a specific front and a specific back and I wanted that handle to be seen in the front. So I had to kind of take these out. But I have some moss that, different kinds of moss in a bag that I got at Hobby Lobby. And it looked kind of almost like dirt to me. And so I'm using that along with some reindeer moss that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going all the way around this entire um, surface of the bucket on top of that floral foam and covering everything. So you cannot see the floral foam and you can't see uh, like, the fact that they're like fake flowers, like it left, leaves the bulb there, but I kind of even tuck that moss underneath them. And I just use a little bit of hot glue as I go along doing this. And I even use like a bamboo skewer to help me put everything down in between all those little hard to get areas. And that way I don't burn my fingers. And it's really nice to get that reach in between all of the flowers. I really love how this came out. This is a look at everything when it's all finalized and together. I really love the informalness of that pale there, like the galvanized metal. I loved how it was already distressed like this. It kind of has that nice little farmhouse feel to it, Euro cottage look. It feels like you did just kind of take these and planted them in this little pail and oh, look what grew up here. I just think it's really cute. And this would be, it's neutral enough that it'll match a lot of different decor styles. And I think it's gonna be so cute in my home. What do you guys think of this and if you know what kind of flowers these are let me know unfortunately we're out of time with today's episode but i still have some of these beautiful projects to show you so make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell and stay tuned for part two coming in the next few days with the rest of these projects i'm so excited for you to see them all i hope you liked today's projects which one was your favorite let me know down in the comments and i'll see you on part two thanks so much for watching happy crafting if you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.